to bring us home, we have Nathaniel Raymond from the Harvard Humanitarian Institute. Nathaniel. All right, this is cool because I feel like a contestant on The Price is Right, and that's always been a dream of mine. Uh, so who knows what PII is? Say it. Personally identifiable information. All right. <laughs> now, who knows what DII is? I thought so. Demographically identifiable information. And DII, not PII, is basically the fuel in the tank for AI. But we don't have a conception of how rights and ethics relate to DII. We actually don't even have, other than my book chapter and group privacy last year in Springer, which, you know. <laughs> um, we don't have an accepted definition of DII, but we're generating this type of new data and we're using PII-based ethics, PII-based IRBs, PII-based readings of Belmont, Nuremberg, the Geneva Convention, to use this DII data with some of the most vulnerable people in the world in experimental ways with absolutely no oversight. So thus, my provocative but hopefully also precise title, Data Colonialism. And that phrase, it's very loaded intentionally. And it came out of a moment I had last summer about this time I was discussing Sean Martin McDonald's paper, Big uh, Ebola, Big Data Disaster. If you read one Ebola call detail records paper this year, make sure it's, it's Sean Martin McDonald's Ebola, Big Data Disaster. And I was responding to it at Data and Society, and I said, this is data colonialism. And then I got off the stage, and I'm like, what the hell does that mean, um, besides being buzzword bingo? And I began with my team at the Signal Program on Human Security and Technology to try to unpack in the past year what that meant. And so we got to a definition of colonialism, meaning the imposition of unequal, often extra-legal, power relationships on one group by another. And in that sense, we are in a state because of DII, because we haven't contended with DII. We hit a fork in the road, as they say where I'm from, and we took it. <laughs> Um, we haven't had an intentional process to think about how we, we retrofit our ethics and our rights for technologies such as AI that rely on DII. Based on an Instagram post by Meredith Whitaker, I was introduced to Ursula Franklin last year, and she said, uh, the late great Ursula Franklin said, technology is the way you do anything. My provocation for you here is that rights and ethics are a technology. Stop thinking about them as separate from our stuff with the ones and the zeros, and as Elizabeth Bishop said, the bright objects that hypnotize the mind. Ethics and rights are actually prefacing protocols to use the other technology. So in June of last year, I told my team, after the data colonialism mind bleh, um, I said, okay, let, we're going to stop innovating. For one year, we're going to, Luke, turn off the computer, and we're going to step away from technology. And we're going to get back to basics, like ACDC in the garage with the guitars, just turning up to 10. And out of that process, we created the signal code. We spent six months reading all available rights and law, and we came down to the existence of five rights. The one I want to talk to you about in the last minute I have is right four, data agency. And data agency, and thinking about that concept of data agency, was an attempt to apply existing rights and ethics to the concept of DII. And what does that mean? It means we have to go beyond informed consent. We have to begin thinking about what does informed notification, meaningfully informed notification, and meaningfully, meaningfully informed participation mean for communities. In my context, in humanitarian response and human rights documentation, we are engaging in non-consensual human experimentation on the most vulnerable people in the world on the worst day of their lives. Uh, that demands that we do more, and we start thinking of ethics and right as a technology equal to ones and zeros. Thank you.